In our last video I showed you how to create a search within your data. Now I want to show you how to switch columns so that search can be changed. It'll look something like this. So if I type Al, this is what comes up for name. However, I switch to company, it comes up for the company. If I switch to state, we get Alabama. And if I switch to email, we get all the AL emails. So I'm going to show you exactly how we did that. If you're unaware of how to create this basic search engine, uh, go see my last video. Um, if you've been following along, uh, I think you'll enjoy this. So back to what we were using before. Um, this is the spreadsheet that we were using. Uh, the first thing we need to do is create data validation. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And we're just going to do a, a quick and simple dirty drop down. And, and go to your data tab. Go to your data validation. Click on data validation. Uh, in the settings tab, make sure you go to list. And our source is going to be right here. Click OK. And there is our data validation. So I'm going to merge these and format this. I like to use a mixed color because it gives it sort of a 3D effect. That way people kind of associate it with a button. So our next phase is to use something called the address function. And the address function is basically going to look at these columns and assign an address to them. And I'll show you later why that's important. But first we're going to go address row. And our row is going to be referenced here. And our column is also going to be referenced here. So we're going to take that function and drag it across all of the columns like so. And then our next phase is to do an hlookup. So we're going to go equals hlookup. And hlookup is just like a vlookup except it looks through a horizontal list rather than a vertical list. And so our lookup value is going to be this. Our table array is going to be here. Our going to look at one row down, so our row index number would be 2, and we want it to be false because we want an exact match. So if I pick one of these, you see that that changes. So if I go company, you see that it turns into N8. If I go to state, it will be R8, and so on and so forth. So the next thing we want to do is we just want the column, we don't need the row, so we're going to change this. We're going to go equals, we're going to add a mid function to that, so that's going to be our text. Our start number is going to be 2, our number of characters is going to be 1. And we have R. So we're looking at state, our column is R, so that works out perfect. So our next step is to do an indirect function. Now an indirect function turns a cell value into text. So I'll show you exactly where we put it. And it's uh, indirects can be used, uh, used very often with um, address functions and column and row functions. But here I'll show you exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to put our indirect here. So we're going to go indirect. And our reference text is going to be there. Okay. We're going to use this and manipulator, and we're going to go row is there. So hopefully that worked. Okay, so now we just need to make this a permanent reference. So we need to go F4 and make this a semi-permanent reference or a horizontal permanent reference. 
So 2 is our value, and the reason the value changed is because now it's looking through state. So A is the second letter in California. So A comes up. So now we're going to drag that formula down and see what happens. Okay, so now we're ranking. We don't have to change this rank function because this rank is just looking at these. So our next step is to change how our VLOOKUP looks because as before we set up our VLOOKUP to just look at these three columns. So we need to make some changes. So the next thing we're going to do is we have to adjust our VLOOKUP to be rather than just um, three columns wide we're going to make it well, we can just make it big. We can put it up to Z. And what that will do is allow our VLOOKUP to look through any one of these uh, different columns in order to bring the correct result. So after that, we've set that up. We need to actually adjust this number three, because that's looking through at the third column, to be variable depending on what column we're looking up. So I'll show you how to do that. We're going to go equals column indirect. We're going to go L7, which is that M. We're going to use the AND. And we're going to go row. And you can actually pick any row. It doesn't really matter. So we can go row there. And, and it brings up 13. So now we're going to change these functions to look at that rather than the number three. Actually, I just made a mistake because what happens is if I did 13, it was counting 13 over. So what we need to do is we need to make this minus column, and then we're just going to put this right here. And the reason we do that is because we want to subtract the number of columns we're looking over. So what it was doing instead, and we're going to add one. So we're going to minus column, and then we're going to plus one. And that should work. So I'm going to drag this formula down. So because we're in first and last, we're looking at the third one over. Now we're looking at the sixth one when we pick city the tenth one when we pick phone, so if we put, we can even put numbers here, it doesn't have to be text. And if we click on email, go back to A, we're looking at the twelfth column. So as you can see, uh, you have to add this little minus column, just uh, use the same column that you're in, and then add one, because uh, we're starting, uh, you have to start one over. So. Anyway, that's exactly how you do it. That's um, essentially how you switch columns for your search. Uh, use the indirect function, the address function, the column function, and the row function.